My name's Guy Kesterman. I've been a professional bike tester for 21 years. And today, I'm at Cody Brennan, Trail Centre, riding the beast route with Big KXC and a bunch of pretty vocal sheep. And I'm riding two bikes today. The Orange, Stage 5, and Stage 6. Both 29ers. Stage 6 has 160mm fork, 150mm travel. Stage 5, 135 mil travel at the back and a 140 mil fork. So, looking at stage five first. Again, this is not a lightweight cross country 29er. Starting off Fox 36 fork up the front, cut down to 140 mil of travel, but it's the full on low and high speed compression adjustable, what used to be the old RLC fork, it's the fit fork now, but this is an absolute beast of an enduro fork. Sheet metal folded by hand and machine and punched and cut in Halifax in the UK in England. So really tough, but really, really detailed work frame. You can see it's got all these facets in the side and the top tube now is particularly intricate forming. You know, all computer folded and you've got these seam welds underneath. This back end section is made up of loads of multiple pieces. There are pieces inside that you can't even see with loads of little cutaways in it. And then the heart of the orange system, this single pivot swing arm, super accurate in terms of quality control and the alignment on it, a really, really durable system that they've been using for an over 20 years now. And it's just such an evergreen system. I mean, they're constantly tweaking it and refining it. But while the uh, standard orange five and the Alpine six have very different pivot positions, uh, the stage five and the stage six actually have the same pivot position which you wouldn't necessarily realize from riding them back to back because uh, they've got a different suspension feel surprisingly different in fact the swing arm itself is shorter i mean it, it's still pretty long it's a 445 mil chainstay on this large uh whereas the stage six is a 450 so you know it's a long bike i mean both of these bikes you have to take the front wheel off to get them in my van which is pretty rare even for 29ers and you know, they're not skimping in terms of the uh, suspension control on here. 200 mil shock with a 50 mil stroke. So that's seven mil less stroke than the stage six, but you still got, it's a full float X2 factory series Fox shock with this extra volume chamber, air chamber on the back. And looking over this side, you've got full low speed and high speed compression adjustment and full low and high speed Rebound adjustment, so super adjustable shock. And I keep forgetting to say, you have to get one of these if you've got an X2 shock. Not only because it's obviously a really good way to adjust those little recessed high and low speed clickers in there, but it's just one of the nicest tools you can get for mountain biking. I, I was so excited when I got one of these. Obviously the Tainstay swing arm assembly completely different. It's a one piece section on the stage five, shorter at 445 mil. Whereas on stage six, you've got this separated chain stay and seat stay. So brings it down a lot closer to the chain ring there for a, a stiffer back end, essentially, but not a little heavier. This bike comes in, I mean, a lot of it's the tires to be fair, but this bike comes in just under 15 kilos with the obligatory enduro inner tube and pedals on. This one comes in 14 and a half, well, 14.7 kilos with inner tube and pedals on. So you're probably looking around 14.2 and 14.5 overall weight without those pedals on. And the other big difference, even though the rims are the same, it's the same race face arc 30, same Eagle X01 setup, same Hope hubs. You've got Minion DHR2 on the rear with 2.4 inch wide tire carcass. So a bigger volume tire. And up front, you've got Minion DHF and the 3C Max Serra. Max Terra compound, that's the triple compound, and it's 29 by 2.5 wide tyre. So again, bigger, more volume, more grip on the tyre. And while the mainframes look almost identical, and they use predominantly the same 1.4 mil uh, sheet metal that's folded into shape to create them, a bit of 1.2 in there and a bit 1.5, uh, slight differences in that layup. And But the, the only real thing you can spot is if you look at the top tube, it's a very slightly smaller tube. Uh, it's not as deep, it's slightly different profile, and it just makes it slightly lighter. And in terms of the ride quality, a more forgiving frame. It's surprising how much difference that makes. Uh, just that little rounded top rather than the flat top. Just some subtle differences in there, but when you're riding the bikes, it uh, makes quite a dramatic difference. It just goes to show just how much manipulation and how much tuning has gone into these frames over the years. 
they've really taken a lot of weight out of these bikes. They're not, so they're not actually massively out of the ballpark of carbon, and they're certainly right in there with steel equivalent bikes. And of course, hand built in Britain by Orange in Halifax. Uh, if you've not watched my uh, hand built Orange factory tour video, then uh, get online. I'll, I'll post a link somewhere on this video. In terms of spec, you've got uh, 29.23 tyres, front and rear. On the stage five, you've got high roll two on the back, and you've got the awesome, ever faithful Minion DHF on the front. So, still a 30 mil ALC race face rim on Hope hubs. So again, just over the hill from Orange, they're building them at Hope. Super durable hubs. Wheels are all handmade by Orange in Halifax. So, in the whole bike, put together by hand from literally from sheet metal coming in being folded, being welded, being alignment checked, being sent away for heat treatment, coming back, being realignment checked, having the little tokens that they cut out during the build process. They're heat treated at the same time, so they can check that they're to the exact T6 tolerance they need to be. If they're not, the frame is put back in, reheated, requenched. You know, there's so much going on with these frames. You know, people go, oh, oranges, they're a bit basic, they're a bit simple, just because they see it as a single pivot swim arm. But look at that. I mean, that's serious alloy origami going on there. And they're cut because literally they're building bikes on the shop floor below the computers and the designers that are working on them, they can change day to day if they need to. You know, there's no production lag. They haven't committed to a mold. While they might seem one of the most traditional bikes at first shot, they're probably one of the most progressive and one of the most rapidly evolving bikes at any given moment. Up to the top, RockShox reverb post, because obviously there's no restriction on how low or how high you can go on the post or how much shaft length you have, because it's a dead straight seat tube. Uh, seat angle on stage five is 74 degrees. Head angle is 66.5, so it's a degree steeper than the stage six. And reach is 452, so a fairly conventional reach on the stage five, not super long on this large. Bars, 800 mil, rental, so all the feedback, all the stiffness, all the accuracy, and 50 mil rental stem, 35 mil diameter, so again, utterly solid front end. Guide R brakes, possibly the only thing I think they've maybe missed a trick on here. I'd love an RS just to get that extra swing link, you know, a little bit more modulation, a little bit more fine control because the bike is so intuitive and feels so alive through your feet and through your hands in terms of the suspension and how adjustable that suspension is. It'd be great to have that same level of, you know, ultra fine control through the brakes as well. But, you know, it's a small thing. And speaking of small things, just look at that. Just really neat. The little orange logo cable clips here. Just keep everything a bit tidier, a bit neater. And, you know, they, like I say, orange get a lot, of, a ton of stick from some people about being industrial, agricultural, filing cabinets, whatever, but you know, I defy you to look at this much workmanship by hand in the UK and not think of this as some kind of, you know, high speed, high velocity, maximum fun kind of craft beer trail bike, you know. Hipsters should be going crazy about this, not about carbon made in hundreds of thousands out in Taiwan. This, you know, this is your artisan alloy frame set. And this is the Orange Stage 6, the burlier 29er in the Orange lineup. So if the Stage 5 is your Orange 5, the Stage 6 is your Alpine equivalent. So again, shock, still 200 mil, but it's a 57 mil stroke here. Still got the low speed and high speed compression adjustment and low and high speed rebound adjustment on the uh, Fox Float X2 shock there. Nice and dusty from Brian Thrashing at Bike Park Wales yesterday. Again. The reach is longer, 460 mil just over on this large, and the head angle is slacker at 65.5 because you've got this full 160 mil stroke Fox 36 factory fork in here. <coughs> that longer shaft at the back gives it 150 mil travel, which means they've also had to lengthen the chainstay slightly just to get the space with that bigger 2.4 inch tire just to get that all the way up to the seat tube, they've had to bring the seat chain stays out to 450 mil. So this is a long, long bike. So the stage five is just over 1200 centimeters long. So pretty long for a 135 mil travel bike. But this stage six, a full 1245 from axle to axle. That's a seriously long wagon. And that just means masses of stability. This thing is an absolute freight train when it comes to flying down the uh, either at Bike Park Wales yesterday, hitting big stuff blind, 
or just, you know, the stuff at Cody Brennan we've been smashing through today and on Snowdonia tomorrow. Uh, you've got the ISCG tabs in there for the chain guide. Probably can. You've got ISCG. Oh, you can't see it in this light. And again, there's just so much workmanship in this frame. I mean, hopefully you've watched the factory build video, or you will go and watch the factory video build video after this, but if you look at all the folds, you know, they're computer folded, all these little grooves, dimples, curves, all the straight edges, curves in the tube, you know, the heart, everything is there for a reason. These are bikes that, you know, were seriously boxy in their first incarnation, but that was 20 years ago. You know, little gussets like this, this has all been refined over like, two decades, over two decades of bikes of this basic design being ridden and evolved and tweaked and tuned. And because they're in the UK, they can make those changes instantly because literally the machines that are making them are sat just below the designers who are programming the machining programs. And also on the shop floor, they've got super experienced engineers who are just used to using this metal day in, day out. They know how it works. They're used to you know, these are artisan craftsmen working with this material day in, day out. They're not just somebody building a frame that they don't really care about in a factory a long way away in Taiwan, just trying to get it built as fast and cheaply as possible. You know, Orange have a, have a reputation for building super bomb-proof bikes, and they're not going to throw that away by skimping. Even things like, you know, the powder coat. There's three layers of powder coat done in the factory. Every single facet of this bike, literally every single facet of this bike, is there for a reason or the multi-stage QC when it's being made, you know, bending it back into shape, getting the alignment bang on, because this pivot only works. These bearings only last as long as orange pivots do have the reputation for lasting, because it's perfectly aligned within microns, you know. There aren't a bunch of linkages that you can force together and put pivots in to kind of take out the slack in the system if the frame's a bit wonky or the mold's not quite right or the jig's getting a bit old and bent. It has to be within microns to work as smoothly as the bike needs to to shine as much as it does. You can tell through your feet almost immediately what you've done up here with this Fox X2 shock. I mean, the longer travel and the longer stroke does need more tuning than the Stage 5. Normally bang a load of uh, volume rings in there to make it more progressive so you can get a bit more sensitivity off the start but still have it catching the big stuff. And there is always going to be that higher level of feedback, that higher level of influence from that higher main pivot. Uh, compared to a low pivot or a four bar more neutral linkage. It's just such an informative feedback rich bike. I'm doing all kinds of like, you know, involving hand gestures here and an involving tone in my voice because that's how this bike rides. There are some brilliant bikes that just feel totally neutral, but oranges every time I ride them, I'm like, how can this be so good? How is this such a fun bike to ride? And up front on top of this, you know, neatly machined head tube, they certainly haven't skimped on control. 35 mil stem, I mean it's a hope here, um, you, or you can go for a rental stem to match these big rental 800 mil bars, it's tons of feedback, super tough but you know, super tough bars, and you can see, you know, soft compound grip, even after two days of riding, that grip's starting to uh, mark up, because that's how hard you ride one of these things, Brian's been absolutely hauling on this, jumped on it straight away, first run, he was like, yeah, I like this, I really like this, and that's what Orange brings to the party, they're just like, straight away. I mean, some, no, no, that's not true, actually. Sometimes first ride, people are like, oh, I don't like the way it kicks back through my feet. And as soon as you drop your heels, open the throttle and just let it be an orange, the thing's just absolutely haul. Which means the only thing I'd maybe say is the guide R brake. I want guide RS. I want swing link in there. I want the same level of control and refinement and kind of feedback through these brake levers as I'm getting through the shock, as I'm getting through the whole suspension kinematic, I'd probably go guide RS or maybe even code. I mean, this bike is gagging for a code brake, if I'm honest. Talking to detail, got the metal head badge on there, but also just these little orange cable tidies. Yeah, they're not, you know, they're not cheap. You can easily pull another bike offline or a big manufacturer and probably get a better spec for the same money. But it's the detail, it's the sense of, you know, the value in this bike is more than just weights and angles it's that real feeling that you're getting a proper quality artisan product that someone's really proud of and that you can be really proud of orange stage five and stage six which is the one for you full comparison video filmed around cody brennan and snowden on the usual channels